Welcome back. After the incredible success of its first series, ITV drama Kidnap and Ransom is back. Tonight sees the return of hostage negotiator Dominic King, played by actor Trevor Eve, uh, who sent to Kashmir to help release a British family kidnapped whilst visiting their son. But when the handover is completed, there's an unexpected shootout with devastating consequences. The deal to set the hostages free is still on. <laughs> I'm in charge. I'm trying to help you. you. Get off my square! If you want to stay alive, are you listening, Anwar? It's all over. <laughs> oh. It hasn't even started. <laughs> How exciting! I know what I'm going to be doing this evening. I love oh, a little good. bit of hostage negotiation. Yeah, well, no, it's good. <laughs> I'm very proud of it. I'm, uh, it's, uh, I think we learned a lot from the first series, and we went you know, given the opportunity to go back and do it again, and I think it's, 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 uh, it's a good watch. So the first episode is on this evening. Tonight, 9 o'clock. And it's based on actual events that happened in Brazil. Well, it's the, I, the inspiration came from yeah. uh, an, an event that happened. The, the way that uh, a, an incident escalated into an impossible situation, which is how the start, the first four minutes of, of our piece is um, a reasonably routine negotiation, which Dominic King is in charge of, is um, the police get involved and escalated into ultimately 15 people being held hostage on a tourist bus mm. and Dominic King is right in the center of that and that's how we we kick off does this have the world's gaze uh, upon it is it, it does that develops as, the, as, it, as it goes on yeah uh, and uh, and those sort of real life events you you have worked with negotiators who have been in those situations I, yes and the guy, I mean, we, we, I've met five of negotiators and modeled myself on one. I picked one. Why? Because um, I thought he was, he had gray hair. He was, <laughs> he was the right, he was the right age. <laughs> he seemed to fit the bill. I was looking for a really deep explanation. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> he just pretty, looked good. Yeah. That's, pretty, that's pretty deep. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's as good. deep as it goes. Um, what are they like? What are their lives They're like? all the, the ones I met, ex-military, ex-SAS, very calm um, and collected, used to pressure, adrenaline junkies, um, couldn't adapt to civilian life. Mm. The, they just didn't, it didn't work. Most of them are on second or third marriages. I hope I'm not, you know, they're not all watching. Going, what the <laughs> hell is he talking about? But you met many, many people. And if you see these are the five, these are the five I met. Um, yeah, so this, they're kept pretty busy. There aren't that many in the world, and it's the fastest escalating crime in the world, mm. kidnapping. And Somalia alone keeps them fully occupied. And is it right that some of the negotiators aren't actually at the scene of the kidnapping <coughs> at the time? Is some of it done? Well, they're by not a at phone? the scene. They're not at the scene of the of, of the kidnapping at the time. They're called in either by. Uh, family on a private basis or an insurance company or government depending on which countries are involved uh, and the negotiation is done by phone but ultimately they will meet the kidnappers they do it all is actually how it is the money is often dropped off in litter bins they do meet in waste ground they do talk on the phone they do often see the other person while they're talking you know on the yeah. phone and yeah. How much of it is is done remotely? So you would uh, you would be on the telephone because I know you spoke to a few people and the phone would ring and they would get up and say, please excuse me, it's, it's the situation. The situation, yeah. That well, they have three phones. They have the domestic phone, the business phone for their office, and they always have one phone for the situation, and that is kept clear and open at all times. Mm. Um, the best one was was the the uh, the female negotiator who came into our office and. She, she, she walked in very calmly and said, I can't, uh, sorry, I, I, I have to leave this phone on during the meeting because I'm expecting a call from the Somali pirates. And then no one took their eyes off this phone, you know. The, the meeting was dead from that moment on. We just wanted it to ring. Did it? It did, and they just go, it's the situation, excuse me, and off they go and talk in a private place. Yeah, it's, it's remarkable. What about the other side of the argument that the people do say that you're sort of perpetrating yeah. crime by uh, mm. financially rewarding you are. you are yeah 
But the, the, the reply to that is, if your loved one was kidnapped, would you want someone to negotiate for their release or not? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I think I would be calling a negotiator pretty fast. Um, you mentioned the relationships, and uh, and Dominic is on his uh, end, coming to the end of his sort of second <laughs> yes. second he's, marriage. He's, he's dipping out um, of his second one. Yeah, yeah. So so what you saw in real life is mm. actually mirrored in his relationship. Yes, I mean he was not able to uh, to do that Saturday shop at Tesco's. It just didn't appeal to him. So he's I think neglected his uh, second family and his and his second wife. Understandably, that is going uh, they're going through. A, a separation and uh, indeed there is an incident in this in this series that he could well be embarking on his third uh, marriage but I don't think that will well well, the, well there is the relationship with uh, with Angela with Helen, yes that Helen does Baxter. is that is that the one yeah. to which you may be referring yes yeah that does sort of develop she starts it though <laughs> yeah I think you can see that very clearly it's all her fault. It's all, yeah, as always. <laughs> um, now, this series was filmed in South Africa. Yeah. But it's based in Kashmir. In Kashmir. Kashmir was just not a viable proposition for security reasons and economic reasons. South Africa is the infrastructure there for filming is brilliant. Mm. So, uh, they say you can shoot 50 different countries in South Africa. I mean, yeah. They've certainly mm. shot in New York and London and um, Manchester, even. Uh, so, I think we did pretty well. Uh, are, are there sort of indigenous species in, in South Africa that you wouldn't necessarily find in Kashmir? Didn't Helen get frightened by a baboon? <laughs> she, she, we all got... We had a family of baboons that joined us for a day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they they just wandered up. We were filming and they Don't just... shoot the baboon because they're not in Kashmir. They, are, they, they may be in Kashmir. Yeah, they are. Are, they, are yeah. there baboons in yeah. Kashmir? Yeah. 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 What about giraffes? Uh, didn't have any of those, but the baboons were remarkable because it was almost like they just came and thought, what are you all doing? And they just sat and looked and we thought, well, we'll, we'll carry on. And so we did. And With then the edited them, them, them out. I yeah. love it. Uh, it's lovely to see you. Thank you very much indeed for coming in today. It's, it's a real Kidnap pleasure. and Ransom. It's tonight at nine on ITV1. Not yeah. to be missed. Still to come, we've uh, Lenny Henry. He's here. Uh, we've got a cu uh, cu curry. Curry? Cu I wish we did. Well, it could be. Uh, we've got a curry cookery special with Anthony Cotton. Uh, so what's his favourite dish? Hot pot or bush took a brain? All will be Could be later. curry. I hope, Although I, I suspect I want one. it might be steak. Uh, that's coming <laughs> up after the news.